So next we're starting on a 2012, that's a 2012 Ford F250 with a 6.7 turbo diesel. <clears throat> and uh, we're having an issue with one of the uh, exhaust gas temperature sensors. Specifically number two, this one's number four in the pickup configuration. So he wants to actually replace all of them so we don't ever have to deal with an issue with this again. So we're gonna go ahead and start changing them one by one. We'll start with the easy one first, of course, and we'll work our way around it. So first, they're 13s. I'm gonna spray a little juice on there. So hopefully, this truck's a little crusty. So hopefully, they come out easy. But I'm not really expecting that because these usually don't. Yeah, okay, so that's not gonna work. So usually what I do, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the sensor gonna cut it off and I probably should have got a bigger ratchet but we're gonna take I have my 13 FDX from snap on so it gets a nice good bite on it hopefully okay camera up. you just want to try not to round these out too easy because it just make your life hell so I don't know came out like butter it's clean too it's like the uh, I'm sorry it looks like the mission system is working we're in California. I'm not going to put any anti seize or anything on these. The original one that I just pulled out, let's see, it didn't have any anti seize on there. So I'm not going to put any anti seize back on them. It's just. Uh, you absolutely can, I believe, on these. It shouldn't hurt it. You know, it's not like it's a uh, oxygen sensor or a nitrous oxide sensor. Okay. We've got that nice and tight. Next, we're going to go find this connector buried up in this harness so let's see I don't know if I can see up there it's all crusty that kind of sucks <laughs> we're aiming for this connector right here which I believe I don't think you can see it. So, this connector right here. You don't have to take the connector off, you just push on the tab, pull the wire out. Comes right out. Okay. So, we're going to go ahead and plug it in, make sure it clicked, and we're going to go on that one. Now, I don't know if I want to do this one <laughs> next. <laughs> kind of fun. <clears throat> but we'll do it though. Get it done. It's going to be a little tough to see, I think. So you can kind of, you can see it right here. This one would be number, the third position on a pickup truck. Because I believe cabin chassis, per the scanner, three and four are, are inverted. I believe I want to say. Yeah. Let's see if it's coming. Out. No, it's not coming out today. This truck doesn't look like it's from. We're in California. It definitely doesn't appear like it's been a California truck. You can see all the rust on it. I mean, there's not much rust compared to what I see other people do. But for me, it's a lot of rust. But for you, it's like a brand new truck. So we're going to go ahead and cut this one too. If I can. I need a longer pair of cutters, so I need to purchase next. <laughs> just destroying it. <laughs> just, they don't really need very much room to get in the other side of it. Okay. Oh. This one hasn't played around today. Through it. 
the benefits of working next to the fire department. Send it like this. This thing's been sitting for an hour and he only drove it a couple miles here. But it's still kind of toasty. The customer wanted me to do it yesterday. Well, he, well it was a hundred and, well, let's say six outside. Uh, with the DPF hot and I told him no. He has to leave it so it can cool down in the morning. It's already a hundred and something outside. I'm not burning my hands. It's too hot. Especially this cartridge. He's like, oh, it's, it won't get that hot. So this, people don't understand the exhaust. It's really hot, really fast. I mean, in the span of 30 seconds, a cat can be, you know, three, 400 degrees. He's on a gasoline car, you know. <laughs> Revenue and these sensors, they're all the same according to Ford. And there's the ambulance. So now we have the fire department, now we have the ambulance. So, seems like everybody's doing their job today. Okay. Stab this one in. And I do have a special socket from Snap On um, that's supposed to bite them, you know, without cutting the wires, but that socket is absolutely garbage. I've never had it remove one sensor. This is the only way that I found to, to work perfect is to cut the head off of it and use a socket. Or you can cut the wires and just slide a wrench down it. Or whatever whatever works for you, but this just works better for me. motorcycle guy. Flip it. Okay, let's start now. Now we get to go on the hunt for the, the connector. So I take a quick second, take a phone call. <clears throat> so we got this um, exhaust gas temperature sensor. Blah, blah temperature sensor in so now we're going to do the connector the connector is going to be extremely difficult to see it is actually right here i don't even know let me see if i can get you to see it you can you see the wire coming off the uh <clears throat> the main harness so let me get you guys clipped somewhere find somewhere i can do this and <clears throat> we'll try to get it out this one might just be invisible <laughs> Okay, so I was able to get it done. It was actually quite easy to get this connector. <clears throat> it's really hard to see out. You guys I can't even see it. This is the uh, <clears throat> EGT side. That wire coming is the uh, harness side for the connector. What I did is there's a tab, just like the back one that you saw. I pushed on it with my pick and grabbed a pair of needle nose and pulled on this wire. Oh, you can see a little bit better right there. I pulled on the wire, pulled the connector out, and then grabbed my needle nose, grabbed it, and plugged it back in. And I pushed it in with my pick on the end to make sure it's locked in, and she's good to go. So look at that one we can actually see. I got one right here and then there's one over here off screen. We're just gonna focus on this one. We're gonna spray a little water displacement on here to just to make it look like I'm lubricating something. It's not really working, you know? Okay, let's grab a 13. Let's see if this one will come out. And this is our fender right here. This is number two. Right, this is the one we're having an issue with. So that does not work. So we're gonna go ahead and cut it. I'm gonna cut it down low. Make it a little easier. So I can actually reach it. Then we're gonna go ahead and get the 13 and just go to town on it here. Yeah. Okay. Make sure you check that out. Let's go ahead and put the new one in. Okay, let's tighten it. Please. You just want them snug. You don't want them loose. Okay. Now we're gonna move over here. As you can see the connector right there. Again, they put them, I guess it's good they tuck them up away. 
Because so I've had Chevys, um, someone hit something. It ran out, actually ran over a tumbleweed, a little one, and it ripped the wires off one of these. Which, you know, I mean, it's kind of funny, but not really. Sorry, the camera's going to be a little funky for a minute. It's really not a good place for it. I just want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So there's our connector. And just for an example of how I did the back, I'll do this one the same way. Well, not exactly the same. I'm going to use my big pick. I'm just going to grab the back of the connector and take my pick. Push it till it clicks. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Just like that. Okay. Let me get the new wiring over there. Okay, there's our new wiring. Uh, I'm gonna do the same thing. Make sure the tabs are pointed down. See, just like that. And just go like so. Line it up. It's a little difficult one here. Not far over. <laughs> and then just wanna make sure it goes click. Click. And then we'll give a little rub and tug, make sure it's good to go. Cool. Okay, now we have one more. One more and we're almost done. Hopefully I can find a good place for this camera now. Okay. So this is our next attendant. This is number one. This is the furthest one forward on the exhaust system. I don't think these have, yeah, they don't have one up, upstream like a 6.4 uh, six or 6.4. Six There's one all the way on the back side of the engine that always goes bad in Kind of a bear to replace. So let's see, let me get my, my claws in here. I'm going to go ahead and cut it at the bottom again. Is that, cut at the bottom and cut it for as far back as we can on our cutters. So we get more leverage on them. Now we're going to go ahead and pull this one out. Oh man. Okay. okay. Here's our other EGT. Here's number one. Okay, let's go ahead and pop our new one in. These are all from Ford the sensors. Like 90, I'd say 95% of the stuff we use is all factory stuff there. Trying to mess around with cheap aftermarket crap. Because one of these sensors goes bad. I've had a customer um, go drive four hours away to go to the river or lake, and uh, every time he'd stop for fuel at a particular station, um, he would have one of these sensors fail and he'd have to have it towed back. Not very funny, but I mean, when I mean, these sensors, if they go open, it thinks you're tampering with the emission system. So the truck, um, it'll definitely derate, but it can potentially cause it to not crank. I, I've seen it before on the 6.4s. I don't know that I've ever seen on a 6.7. So, but, you know, that's always something to keep in mind. Now, we get the fun part. I'm trying to plug this sucker in. Getting dirt in my face. Making a mess. So, I, it's going to be a little hard to see this one. This connector is actually oh, right here. See where my hand is up there? It's in my hand right there. So, it's actually right there. So what we're going to do, we're just going to push down the tab, pull the connector out, but it looks like it's in that harness. Okay. Then we're just going to plug it back in. Simple as that. Just so want to make sure you get those plugged in all the way. You want to make sure they click in as well. So do not want one of those coming unplugged. So we'll go ahead and go up top, we'll clear the codes and go take our first spin. So this is the code we had before. We had the P2033, the EGT sensor circuit high, bank one, sensor two. Um, when you would uh, heat the sensor up really hot, it would actually go open. So that's why I replaced that one. But we did all of them just because he, customer wanted to. And he's, he's a pretty good customer and he's, you know, he just doesn't want to deal with this kind of stupidness. If one of those sensors goes bad, then his truck goes down, he just can't do that you know so we go went ahead and cleared the codes let's go ahead and fire it up because it's 100 and something outside already make sure we don't have any merit just pop-up codes okay we're clear on that we're gonna go back and check the EGTs I'm just gonna pull them all up and then we'll take it for a spin and see what she does I think we're gonna be in the exhaust I'm not sure yep 
There we go. Uh, ETT one, two, three, and four. One, two, we got three. And we got quattro, four. Where is my brain at? Oh, one. Nope, I did it backwards. BGR, so you gotta be careful. Let's guess the temperature. Let's guess one, four. We got one, four, one, two, one, three, one, one. We got one, two, three, four. This one should be the hottest, I believe. No, it's three. Three's in front of the DPF, that's why it's warm. So, I'll go take it for a drive and we'll see what it does. So, I just got back from the test drive. Um, as you can see, all the sensors are working good. Everything's getting nice and toasty, which is good. Uh, when you take off, you can watch them all ramp up, except for like mainly the cat. The cat kind of stays pretty warm. So, I'm gonna make sure we don't have any codes. And we're good to go. Cool. So we'll get back to him and it'll be good. We'll see you guys on the next one.